Hi everyone, welcome to Juniper Way. My name is Andrea Pearson, and today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to make a gallon of yogurt using milk, you know, homemade yogurt. So what you're gonna need is, you're gonna need a crock pot. Uh, I know you can use an Insta cooker and things like that, but this is specifically for those of you who are like me and primarily use a crock pot. Um, and you're gonna need a cup of plain yogurt, and of course, like I said, a gallon of milk. And we drink raw milk in our family. First step, if you do it with raw milk, commercial, well, just raw milk, is to shake it. You want to make sure the cream is distributed, which honestly doesn't really matter because once it gets in the crock pot after a little while, it will separate on its own, but you won't have the hard separation that you get when the milk sits for several hours. Turn the crock pot to low and um, we're going to dump this in here. Try not to make a mess. This is how, how much I excel at making messes. Trying not to make it splash too much. There we go. So dump all of it in here. Um, we're going to leave it in here on low for two and a half to three hours. And then at that point we will, um, turn it off and let it sit for a little while for three hours. And then at the end of the three hours, we will whisk in a cup of plain yogurt. So you dump the milk in, um, I smash it, put the lid on it, and then just let it sit for two and a half to three hours. Um, I think the, I mean, the goal is to have it get to 180 degrees in temperature, internal temperature to the milk because it has an internal inside. <laughs> anyway, so I will continue this video in about two and a half to three hours once the milk has reached the temperature it needs to be. Okay, so I didn't record a video of me turning off the crock pot after two and a half, three hours because it's just, you take it from low and you turn it to off and that's all you do. You just set a timer, after it's been two and a half to three hours, you turn the crock pot off and you leave it there for another three hours and just let it cool down. You don't wanna put it on keep warm because that's too hot for the oatmeal, for the milk. And when you come to it, depending on the kind of milk you're using, like I said, I use, um, oh, I just love that smell so much. I use raw milk. And so there's usually a skin on the top and as you see, it's not super thick. Um, I'm actually wearing my pajamas now, so, <laughs> so, so I'm not wanting to be fully in the video. Um, this right here, by the way, is called whey. So if you're buying yogurt from the store, um, you see this separated, uh, really, really runny liquid stuff, that's called whey. Um, with yogurt, you can just mix it right back into the, um, the yogurt and it's, I mean, it's not going to taste any different. It's not going to really taste different if you keep it out, but, um, I usually just mix it back in just because, you know, it's got beneficial bacteria in it and it's probiotic stuff. Anyway. Anyway, so... There we go. So one cup of um, yogurt. That is an even cup. I know it doesn't look like it because you're looking at it at the wrong angle. Anyway, so we're going to dump this in here. And I scrape it all out. If I were wanting to be really efficient, I would use a rubber spatula, but I don't care right now. I'm just using a regular spoon. Okay. Okay, so cheese, as my brother always says. Get the whisk and you whisk it in. Just whisk it in. Make it all nice and smooth. You don't want to whisk so much that you get it really frothy. Just mix it all the way in. Make sure it's all the way mis mixed in. Um, by the way, this recipe is very forgiving. It's um it's not going to care if you take a little bit extra time on accident or take a little less time. Um, especially if you're using raw milk, it doesn't, it's not super picky. So a little bit le extra cream or sorry, a little bit extra yogurt or a little bit less yogurt, whatever. It's not going to matter super. It's not a huge, huge, huge thing. So, um, I mean, try to make it exact, but anyway, okay. Cut, put the lid back on it. Then you're going to wrap the crock pot in towels 
Um, I always do more than one towel because I'm paranoid that I'm not insulating it enough. And make sure it's covered. This is an exterior wall right here, so it's not super cold yet. I guess I don't need to have that plugged in anymore. Um, there, and it's just going to sit like that until the morning when I'm going to get up and I will finish recording at that point. Um, it can sit for even up to 12 hours. So we have to be somewhere at eight in the morning, 12. I've even had it sit for 14 hours and it didn't cause any problems. Um, like I said, it's very forgiving. So I will record this. We have somewhere to be at eight in the morning and it's right now it's 1030. So, um, I don't know, 1030, 1230. I can finish recording this tomorrow after we get back, but that's it for now. Uh, talk to you in a bit. Okay, it's the next morning and um, we're gonna go ahead and take the towel off of this. It's been about 12 hours. Like I said, it can go eight to 12 hours, even 14 hours sometimes if you know if you don't get to it right away. We're gonna check this out. It's still, uh, it's not super. Yeah, there's a little tiny bit of warmth left in there, but you know, let that drip off. I always do this. Don't like it when my table, my towel, you know, not my towel when my lid gets everything wet. And let's see if I can get you over here so you can see this better. Can you see that well enough? So it's got that crust a bit. And check out the consistency of this. Mix that all the way in. Oh, it still smells absolutely heavenly. So you mix it up. Mix it up, mix it up. And do you see how runny this is right here? At this point, you can either drain it, and the way you would do that is um, with cheesecloth. And I can do a future video on that. Um, or you use, um, or you can just leave it this, this thick or this thin and eat it the way it is. Totally up to you. If you use a whisk, you can get the curds, you know, the chunky bits. <laughs> Everybody likes to hear about chunky bits, right? Um, you can get those to blend in a little bit better. Um, and, and like I said, if you drain or if you strain the um, strain the what you call it the way out of it, then it will be a lot thicker than this. Anyway, so that is what the homemade yogurt looks like. Um, I might go ahead. What I did last time is I sometimes will strain half of it and then half of it I will leave it as is and then mix it all together and then that gets a thicker consistency. Not super, super thick like Greek yogurt thick, but anyway. Yep, that's still a tiny bit warm. Okay, well that's pretty much it. Um, um, I am still doing my the, the giveaway, so if you, I don't remember what the terms of it are, but um, comment below and I will enter you in to win a $100 gift card to Home Depot or a store of your choice. And um, I think that's pretty much it. Hit the like and the subscribe button and the bell icon so you can be alerted to future videos and I'll talk to you all later, bye. Hi everyone, welcome to Juniper Way. My name is Andrea Pearson and today I'm gonna to teach you how to make whey. Um, and specifically, this first part is gonna be about making whey from yogurt. Uh, from homemade yogurt, and then I'll also teach you how to make whey um, when you're making cream cheese, homemade cream cheese. So I've got a video already on how to make homemade yogurt, so I'm going to take it a step from there. You make the homemade yogurt, and then you're going to need cheesecloths, um, um, a rubber band, ladle, and I bought these off of Amazon. They're handy dandy hook things. I'll show you how to use those in a bit, but they make my life a lot easier. So after the after the the um, yogurt has been has been made, you mix it all up. Make sure you know you've got most of the lumps out of it, and then take your cheesecloth, put it. This is how I do it. So I stick it inside the bowl. Make sure these are out of the way. And then let's see. Can you see what I'm doing well enough? Um, we're gonna take this and we are going to ladle a bunch of it into the bowl with uh, inside the cheesecloth. Okay, so now take the ends of the corners, the four corners of your, let's see if I get that off, of the cheesecloth. Take your rubber band, 
wrap it around there. And then take your handy dandy hooky thingy and hook it through here. Let's see if I can get it. Um, it's pretty tight. That's, that's good, you want it to be tight though. Okay, then position this under a handle and we're gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, now you're just gonna let it sit like this and it will slowly, slowly drain out of the, sorry, you can see what's going on. It'll slowly strain through the cheesecloth and it will leave behind um, just the complete yogurt, which in this case is pretty much Greek yogurt when it's got all the stuff strained out of it. Okay, and then I'm just gonna let the rest of this sit. It's not gonna hurt it to have it sit for a few minutes or probably 45 minutes, depends on how long it takes. And I'll go ahead and show this to you when it's finished straining. So that's pretty much it for now. Uh, talk to you again in a few minutes.